Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the First Congregational Church in Beth Bethel. And this is our evening devotion on Wednesday evening in which we are looking at the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works with your actual spiritual DNA. These are exciting studies that we're doing. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, becoming a new man or a new woman. Ephesians 2, verse 13 to 15 reads this, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off, have been brought near to the blood by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing the law of the commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man and or woman in place of two. So making peace. When my mother was uh, in Germany during World War II, and she is German, 100%, she endured these crimes against humanity. And she was often asked during the war to show her papers, to show her citizenship and her status. This nefarious overreach of the government led to the deaths of many innocent people. It was terrifying, she told me. She also said that people lived under this terror and fear for many, many years. It took her almost a lifetime to release herself from this fear that had been uh, taught and ingrained in her in such a young age. She was only 17 years old when her city was destroyed by United States military bombs. And she watched in horror as her Jewish friends began to disappear out of her neighborhood. One thing she always taught me as I was growing up, she always said, don't ever follow the crowd. She learned early in Germany that doing that could lead to your death. Don't ever follow the crowd. That alone proved her life to save her life so many times and it actually has kept me from getting in trouble many, many times. Mom gave thanks to the Lord for saving her life during that time. Not only her physical life, but her spiritual life. She gave her life to Jesus during the war. And from the moment that she knew him, she knew who, where her citizenship really belonged to, that her citizenship was in heaven. Now she was able to manage all of the, the trauma from the war and the fear that she had because she knew who she belonged to. Her favorite verse that was, on, in a, I'll never forget, it was on a wall in a frame um, that was in the house that she would say, it would say, y you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength and the power from Philippians 4.13. What about you? Do you know where your citizenship is? Do you lean on Christ every single day for strength? Or is fear overwhelming you so much that it's crippling you so that you cannot live, live fully for the Lord and neither can you make decisions from faith rather than from, our, from fear. Let me tell you, if it is, you can't, if you are living in, in fear, you, you cannot be free in any way. You cannot enjoy your gifts that Jesus came for you to, to give, God's gifts to you and life, the life that God, that God wants you to have. In Haggai 2.5 it says, My spirit remains in you, among you. Do not fear. Through the prophet Haggai, we, the Lord reminds you and me today that He gave His Spirit to us. And His Spirit will remain with you and in you and you don't need to fear. Though we've been living in times of great uncertainty and that in and of itself can cause fear and anxiety all over the world, it's important that we don't ignore our feelings, but also that we do not allow the anxiety that we have to take over and run our life. Take time to recognize and express what you feel Certainly share it with a trusted friend or me as your pastor 
and maybe write it in a, into a prayer and pray with God about your anxiety and fear and ask God to take it away. And then join with other people who can also pray with you. Stand up strong. This is how we stand up strong in the Lord. And say no to the spirit of oppression which really causes fear and anxiety. Understand that by being conscious of fear, you have already overcome it. One thing that the devil hates is to be recognized. One thing that evil people even hate is that, they, that we begin to recognize who they are. Then you, then you are given the power once you recognize, oh, that's from evil, that's from the devil, that's from someone who is not operating out of faith. In fact, they're operating out of evil. Once you can recognize that, then you can let go of it. Fear is an opportunity to step into your faith more deeply, trusting that God will be with you and wants you to have a wonderful life, a one that is filled with so many good things. If we trust God in our decisions, not trusting someone else that may be causing fear in our life. My mother did that every single day. As the bombs dropped on her head, she told me in her homeland there wasn't a day that didn't go by where there was great fear. But she told me that as she sheltered in place that she prayed a lot with God and, and, and God's peace came upon her. Sometimes she was able to pray with someone in a bomb shelter with her. And they prayed together as the air raids screeched outside. She could hear them. She would often emerge, she told me, from those shelters stronger with gratitude and her faith just grew every day. Fear, you see, keeps us away from allowing God to make us into that new man or that new woman that God has, has for us. It keeps us, from, it keeps us back from living our best life and from thriving. Anxiety works the same way. Through the prophet Haggai, the Lord reminds you and me today that he gave you his spirit and his spirit will remain with you and be in you. You don't, you don't have to allow fear to rule your life, but instead live in faith. A question we must ask ourselves is, who are we listening to? What are we listening to? Where where am I, how am I making my decisions in life? Is it because, is, do I make decisions out of fear and because someone else told me that I have to do something or am I making my decisions out of faith and listening to God who tells me how to, what to do? You can live in victory even today. Just before she died, my mother whispered in my ear, stay strong in God's love. Those were her last words, her last words. So believe this and you will see the difference in your life. I pray today that the Spirit of God will take away all the fear in your life. And then the Lord Jesus Christ will use you in a mighty way in his kingdom. And that you remain in his great love. Remember, God does not only use champions and winners. God often uses the dropouts, the uneducated, and the, those of us who have had failures. And I know I have had many failures in my life. Peter, remember, was a, a big fisherman and denied Jesus three times after he, while Jesus was on the cross. And the other disciples who followed Jesus, who ran away and left him all alone, and guess what? The Lord still used all of them to proclaim his good news to all people. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. God wants to fill you with his spirit today and free you from fear. Ask God to do this for you. Then you will be able to start afresh as a child of God, filled with the spirit, free of fear, a new man and a new woman. Scripture says, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Love is freedom in Christ. I'm going to say that again. Love is freedom in, in Christ. It's freedom to live on earth as it is in heaven. 
In this way, you will receive Christ. When you receive Christ, you receive being a new man and a new woman. You are literally made new in your spiritual DNA. You receive a power that is available when you live your life trusting in God to help you make all decisions out of faith. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this time together tonight. There are many, many people who are living in anxiety and fear, and I ask that each one would come to you and lay those fears down at your feet, at the foot of the cross, and that they would be lifted up in faith as they walk through this life today. Be with each person that is hearing this tonight. There are some who are suffering from sickness and disease and loss and financial burdens, and I just ask, oh God, that you give them a spirit of victory, putting all their faith in you. Though that no matter where they are, on this life, on this earth, or in heaven, you will always be with them and be with us. We pray these things in Christ's holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Join me next Wednesday again um, as we continue in our study of the Holy Spirit, understanding what it means to be complete in the Spirit, complete in Christ. Also, this Sunday, join us if you're in Bethel, Connecticut, for Sunday morning service at uh, 10 a.m., and we will be live right here on Facebook as well. 10 a.m. next Wednesday night, 7 p.m., here on Facebook. If you have prayer requests, please drop comments in the, in, the, in the comment section below. Give some likes and some loves and share this video with some friends. And I appreciate you being here and love you all. Have a good evening. Till the next time. Bye-bye.